we should be aware of how much the colour of our skin, um, our cultural upbringing, just the country we're in, um, our socioeconomic background, our class, um, really impacts not just who we find attractive, but just how we date. This is Salt's YouTube. I'm Lauren Wendell and she's back. Yeah, she is. It's Tim. Hi, everyone. I missed you guys. So we're talking about dating across different backgrounds, different cultures, in different scenarios, and actually like bringing your differences together. And sometimes that can be amazing. Oh, yeah. And sometimes... Less amazing. It can be a real <laughs> challenge. Yeah. So have you ever dated someone from a different background to you? In any, in any sort of area? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually, I lived abroad for two years. I lived uh, right on the border of France and Switzerland. Geneva, where I was, um, is very multicultural. And so um, some of my first dates were from people from uh, Francophone African countries. I, had, okay. I dated a guy who came from Australia. Okay. Um, and then obviously there were like French guys, Swiss guys. I have also lived in France mm, and yeah. dated both French men and Franco-African men who were living in France yeah. at that time. Only one I dated for like any significant amount of time. We're talking about like a few, a handful of dates, a yeah. month, that kind of thing. There was one yeah. who I would have considered to be like really important to me. What differences did you find? Some of the main differences that I found, um, particularly whilst I was in France, like so dating on the French side, is that there definitely is this like boldness, I think, um, and this kind of like wanting to wine and dine whoever they're dating do you know what i mean like they'll take you to a really nice restaurant they're all about yeah it being romantic like did you speak in french i think most of the people i dated had learned english and so we spoke english mostly mm. uh there was one guy I actually dated in switzerland but he'd come to switzerland from I think it might have been zambia actually okay um but he'd been in switzerland for about 11 or 12 years but i spoke better french than he did which shocked me um <laughs> Because, yeah. Il faut continuer en français alors, hein? Shall we? Oh. Pourquoi pas? Je pense que c'est une super idée. Vas-y, on peut le mettre. Moi aussi, en fait, c'est exactement la même chose pour moi. So we like the French men. We love the in French summary. Oh, 100%. So when I went to university, I went to university here in England um, and I became friends with a lot of uh, Swiss guys, actually. Great. And so was that part of the reason why when I had the opportunity to move to France, I wanted to go somewhere that was right on the border of Switzerland? Maybe. Okay, I'm piecing this together. I'm, I'm marpling my way around this. <laughs> so I've got the measure. I moved to France because of like, it was no, it was because the Lord led me there. I served some churches. Okay, it was a fantastic right. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But there are perks. But there are perks. And like, you know, we were talking a bit about accents earlier. Yeah. I do really enjoy the French accent and I still do. Um, oh la la. I know. Oh, oh, just you saying that. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> but um, so I do, I do love the accent, but it was, it came from knowing people um, from France France, from Switzerland, Francophone um, countries. I had some Belgian friends as well. Um, I have family that now live in Canada and who are learning French. So I just, I love yeah. everything about the French language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the culture is something I've become, I've come to love as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I found when dating French, I, I would have to broadly say French speaking men. Right, yeah. Actually French guys. Same here. When, you, when you're an international person in another country, I think you actually you do, do mix with international yeah. groups more than you mix yeah. with like people who were born and raised in yeah. that place because they kind of already have their groups set. I found them, as you say, more bold, yeah. more straightforward. I was on a second date with someone when they referred to me as their girlfriend. Oh, wow. Which is something yeah. we wouldn't do. Exactly. But actually, it's not that big a deal. No. And actually, I don't even think that it implied exclusivity. But it was no. just the term that he used for the woman he was dating. I mean, yeah. At yeah. that time. And actually, I felt a, a little bit more reassured by that than the way that we do it in yeah. Britain, where you kind of plod along. I actually, and it's something, so when I was looking to potential, to go to university, I started researching American universities. And some of the books I was reading was to explaining American dating and the way that they date. And they were talking about how actually you can be dating someone for months and you will not know whether or not you're actually in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And I read it and it shocked me because yeah. I was like, in my naive 17 year oldness, I was like, how can you go, like literally go on multiple dates over the yeah. course of three months with someone 
and then you'll like, you know, be like, so where are we? And the guy doesn't even think that you're in a relationship. Oh, that shocked me, but it is true. Absolutely. And it's becoming more and more true here as well. Yeah. So it was refreshing, I think, being in, in France and actually, yeah, sort of guys being like, after three dates, they're like, we want to at least- This is it, yeah. Say something about where we're going. But even then, if you've grown up in the same country, you can be coming from totally different backgrounds. Yes. Your upbringing, the standards that have been instilled in you, your approach to certain things, your approach to what a godly marriage is, yeah. your approach to how to spend money can be totally different. And we've talked about this before because you're a black woman who's dating, you've raised in a black family, yeah. you know, and your family may have different sort of standards and different ideals as a result of that to maybe mine where I'm raised in a white environment. My my whole family is some level of like British. Well, my dad's kind of Irish, hey. you know what I mean? So we're yeah. really, we're really quite contained to these yeah. aisles, you know? <laughs> That's good, yeah. But, but there can be, and obviously each family is completely individual and each person is completely individual, but there can be trends. And I don't want to yeah. stereotype. We want to be really careful not to stereotype. Yeah. But there are things that, that you can bring forward. Like, have you noticed any difficulty from the perspective of a black woman with a Nigerian heritage? So yeah, I'm um, black British. My parents were born and raised Nigerian and then moved here when they got married. And so I have lived with this kind of like, I feel inherently British. Yeah. But my I was raised in a Nigerian home because yeah. the values that my parents had were very much Nigerian. Um, and also just being a black person in this country, your experience of life is just going to be different from the experiences of someone with a different ethnicity, particularly white. If you're enjoying this chat, don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more salt content from us. And this is actually a conversation I was having with someone recently off the back of an article that we wrote and talked about. We, we did an article together. Yeah, we did. We should put link in, yeah, link in the, link in link the, the bottom. Yeah, yeah, we did, where yeah. we spoke about the challenges yeah. of dating yeah. as a black person, as a yeah. black woman. And it spurred some really fantastic conversations, actually, um, with my friends, my family, and it was actually the moment that my parents found out that I was indeed dating. <laughs> I think they knew. We outed you. <laughs> but I'd never said it. And then they were just like, yeah. And now like every time, like they'll have like friends of theirs come up and be like, oh, your daughter wrote this amazing article. And they're like, yeah, she did. <laughs> we're so proud of her. <laughs> and then she's speaking to. <laughs> Love you, mum and dad. Um, no, but it, I had some really fantastic conversations come out of them. And one of them was actually a friend who had just started dating a girl from Ghana. Uh, he was he was he was white. She was um, from Ghana, okay. and he was saying, "I don't really understand because I like to think I'm an empathetic person, person okay. or compassionate person, but I don't understand why she gets particularly upset about certain things or why she reads into certain things more than I think is there." And I sort of had to explain to him like there are there are experiences that a black person and a black woman will have that you will never have in your life or understand or be able to fully understand. Yeah, do you think people who usually stick to a certain socioeconomic background or a certain country or a certain race or a certain ethnicity, would you challenge them to explore outside of that? Or actually do you think like, if, if that's your type, that's your type? Yes, 100% I would challenge people to explore. Um, I agree. Yeah, because you, there's like, what, four billion men on the planet, right? <laughs> and then like, okay, some of them- are That's a boy bath if ever I've heard yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and you're really gonna limit it to people who have had the exact same experiences as you. The real danger can actually be if you date someone that's almost too similar to you, because then you're not gonna be challenged. You'll end up feeling bored and you'll end up almost resenting them for maybe the things that you are insecure about in yourself, but that you see in them. Yeah. Um, so I think really challenge yourself, put yourself out there. Um, not obviously any disparagement against people who you've, you know, you have married the boy next door. You know, we all wanted to marry the boy next door when we were like six years old. Um, the boy next door to me, mm -hmm. real story, uh -huh. his girlfriend was Sia. No, yeah, big the girl. Sia. So that's why I didn't date the guy, boy next door. He was taken by Sia. <laughs> What I, I really value in someone is someone who can teach me something. Yeah. 
that doesn't mean that they have to have lived in a different country or speak a language I don't speak or been raised in a in a household where there, there's really strong influences from another heritage or whatever. But it does mean that, that they have to bring me something new. I have to be yeah. excited to hear what they're going to yeah. say next. I don't, I don't, I don't want my life to stop within my box. Yeah. I want to hear about yours. Lauren, you and I, as single women, we have got exciting lives, right? We're, we've got stuff going on and I'll own really? that, I'll take that. If we're gonna have someone new come into that as a significant other, like they have to be, like I said, adding something new, adding something that we can learn, um, something that we otherwise maybe wouldn't have experienced in our lives. Um, but if there's nothing new that's being contributed, then like, you know, I don't wanna say what's the point, but what's the point? <laughs> you wanna grow with someone, yeah, you know, yeah. and you want them to encourage and challenge you to grow and actually learning about other people's life experiences. As, and I, <laughs> A big one for me as well is when someone can teach me to cook something I've never had before. Yes. Oh yes. my, if someone's like, oh, this is my mum's recipe, you're like, oh my goodness, let me get my little notebook because I'm taking that with me. But I mean, that's a reasonably superficial <laughs> one. Like it's not <laughs> character development, but, but it's, it's so example. fun. It's, it's so nice, example. you know. One thing that I do, oh, and it's a very practical point, but it's worth pointing out because for some couples, this really is make or break, is that if you are dating someone who has a particular association or, or love or fondness for another country, whether that's because they've lived there or because their families lived there or whatever, uh, they may want to move there. And I do think that you need to, I mean, not first date. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, so yeah. you tell me that your family's from Nicaragua. You don't want to go to Nicaragua though, do you? Because I'm very happy here, so. <laughs> yeah, no, leave it till there's at least some emotional attachment there, yeah, yeah. yeah. But actually reasonably early on, if you're serious about dating and they uh, see their time in the UK or whichever country you're, you know, you're based in, as temporary, they do kind of need to make that clear. And it may be that you're like, I'm up for this adventure. Let's try it for three years. Let's, you know, obviously you'd want to be pretty committed. We're yeah. talking, we're talking, you know, marry me and then I'll talk yeah. about moving. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> but actually like, it's good to know if that is in someone's plans. Exactly, and I know that I've always, so I've, I love traveling and I've always loved the idea of living abroad, not just mm -hmm. traveling. Um, and I know that like part of the reason, like we said earlier, part of the reason uh, I was living in France um, was because I was sort of beginning that journey of sort of, in my head, it was kind of like first stop France, next stop the world. <laughs> and I kind of, COVID happened. Wow. And so I was like, next stop, back to home, England. Yeah. And literally <laughs> so, your house and yeah, not leaving for two years. <laughs> yeah. So it didn't quite work out that way, but I still have in my heart a desire to maybe live abroad, to to learn other cultures, to know other country, cultures. Um, whilst I was there, I learned French, but I also, I learned, you know, dishes, um, foods yeah. and, um, and all sorts of ways of living. Uh, and I know that if I do end up with someone, I'd want them to also maybe be willing to, to live abroad, or at least, you know, because there are some people who are real homebodies, which is great. But I know for me personally, I want someone who wants to go and see the world, who recognizes that it's a big old world out there. And like, you've got to get a bit further than your doorstep to see it. But I think at the end of the day, if there's anything that people take away from this, I want it to be that we should be aware of how much the color of our skin um, our cultural upbringing, just the country we're in, um, our socioeconomic background, our class, um, really impacts not just who we find attractive, but just how we date um, as a whole. Um, and I think when we've got a self-awareness of that, it will make us open to more opportunities, more ideas, but also we're just going to have a lot more fun in dating. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed it, hit like and subscribe.